Hey, restaurant owners, operators, and managers out there. Today, we're going to talk about recipe costing, but we're going to talk about why I hate a lot of the very detailed, very expensive software tools that claim to make restaurant costing easy for you and your restaurant. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, Ryan Gromfin here, author, speaker, chef, restaurateur, founder of therestaurantboss.com as well as clickbacon.com and scalemyrestaurant.com. Now, I have put out a lot of videos on costing out recipes and calculating food costs and costs of goods sold in your restaurant and we're gonna put a link to that up here or up here. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but we're gonna put a link to that up there and I encourage you to go watch that. But this video is more about my theory behind costing. I'm gonna get in big trouble for this and that's okay. I'm willing to accept the challenge. Go ahead and type in your comments as you're watching this video, please. I'm willing to accept it. I can take it. I'm a big boy. I'm going to get in big trouble for this, but I don't like all of these really popular, really big, really expensive software tools that are coming out that claim to make recipe costing simple for you. The reality is it's just not simple. Now the software tools are good. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of them out there that are good. Some are great, but the challenge that I have for your average everyday ordinary operator is that it's not that the software is not good, it's that the process itself, I've put out videos on restaurant financials are just complicated, it's the process itself that's very complicated. So the reality is, it's just not that easy, and please don't get sold into the marketing of it's easy. Because it's not that easy is exactly why we've not included a detailed recipe costing module into our software ClickBacon, because we just found that it's way too difficult for your average person to do it. Is it important? Is it important to get exact recipe costs? Maybe. I'll let you make that determination when I'm done with this video here. But consider this. Let's assume that you're charging $11 for a hamburger right now. And after your perfect recipe costing, you find out that you should be charging more like $12.50 or $13 for that hamburger. Well, you can go ahead and raise the price, but are you gonna make some of your guests angry? Are they gonna not come in as often? Are they gonna stop coming in just because you raise the price? Remember, your guests don't care what you pay. They only care what they pay, and that's all they should care about. But the reality is maybe at $11, your burger was good, but at $13, is your burger still good? Is your location still good enough? Is your build out and your service still nice enough for a $13 hamburger? Because here's the reality, there's a lot of restaurants that I eat at that have good food, but it's good because it's cheap. Once that food gets more expensive, it's not that good anymore. I'm not gonna eat at that restaurant anymore. So by knowing exactly what the cost is on your burger, are you gonna make the burger smaller? Are you gonna go to a lower quality meat? Are you gonna go to a bun that's not as good? Of course you're not gonna do that. So I'll make the argument throughout this video of what's really the point of knowing exactly what the cost of each recipe is. And I'm talking exacting, not average. I'm talking exacting. I'm gonna make this argument over and over again. And here's one right now. You're gonna make the argument that we should, that we need to do this for inventory reasons. But again, here's a video up here as to why I hate inventory. If you have less than five units and you're doing less than five million per location, generally speaking, I don't think you should be spending your time on a perfect inventory system and perfect recipe costing. Again. Watch that video up there to learn more about my inventory methods and why I don't like the generally accepted inventory methods that most people are teaching in the restaurant business. But back to recipe costing. To me, it just comes down to time and resources. Wouldn't it be great to have a perfect system? Of course it would, but the amount of work that it's gonna take for you to build that perfect system, you could be out shaking hands and kissing babies with your guests. You can be out making sure that your guests are having the most amazing experience, the best experience ever, possible or imaginable rather than sitting in an office working on these perfect recipes. And even if you did get perfect recipes, which you're likely not to because of all the challenges that go along with weights and measurements and conversions and changing things from purchase units to recipe units and then having multiple different recipe units, all of the challenges that go along with this. If you've done this before, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never done it before, trust me, you're going to know if you try this then that's assuming that all of the costs of all of your purchased items are up to date every single time you purchase 
Remember, not all of your vendors are on an EDI system, especially if you're a smaller restaurant. You're probably working with some smaller vendors that don't support EDI. So even when these software tools claim that they're integrations and they integrate with all of this other stuff, the reality is you're still gonna have a lot of manual data to do anyways. And if you don't believe me, that's fine, but I can tell you right now, I've worked with chains. I worked with a chain in, that had 11 units, a very successful chain. It's been around for 40, 50 years with 11 units, 12 or 13 now, but at the time I was working with them a couple years ago, they had 11 units. They were paying $300 per month per unit, plus they needed another license for their home office. So 12 units at $300 each per month for over three years. And they didn't know their food costs. They didn't know their cost of goods sold. They didn't know each individual recipe cost. Why? Because it's hard, it's complicated. They didn't have the staff or the time to figure all this stuff out. They kept saying it was a priority, but then other things kept coming up. And so they never made it a priority. Now, why are they paying for all that software? Why are they fooling themselves? I don't know. I tried to teach them simpler systems. They didn't want to use it, but they still don't know the answers to these questions because they want the fancy tools. To me, I think a lot of this is ego driven. But more recently, literally last week, I spent three hours on the phone with an operator that I work with now trying to explain to him and his chef and his entire team how all of the work that they've been doing for the last six months paying for one of these tools has been wrong and here's the way that they have to do it right. And when they finally grasp the concept of what I've been sharing with them and how they've been doing it wrong and how hard it is to do it right, literally their answer is, wow, this is a lot more work than I thought. And I'm like, I've been telling you that for six months that's why I don't think you should be paying for the software. That's why I don't think you should be dedicating your resources. So again, I go back to, it's not that I don't want you to have perfect recipes and I don't want you to have perfect recipe costs. I should say recipe costs. It's that it's just not worth the time and the resources until you're big enough. When you're small, you got to go out and you got to shake hands and you got to kiss babies. Go out and sell a catering event. Take the time that you'd be sitting in the office, shake hands, sell a catering event. You're gonna make more money than you're gonna make knowing if your recipes are perfect or not. And the reality is, unless you're crushing it at the top line, it's not even gonna make that big of a difference. If your burger is awesome now and people love it, you can probably charge more for it. It's simple supply and demand theory. But if your burger is not awesome and people don't love it and you're not crushing it at the top line, Knowing your recipe or knowing the cost of your recipes and charging more to your guests is not going to help you. You have a bigger issue. There's a reason people aren't coming into your restaurant. It's not because you're not charging more. It's because your product isn't good enough to charge more. Your product might not even be good enough right now. So knowing how much it costs and wanting to charge more is not going to help you. Now, again, if you're absolutely crushing it at the top line, if you've got five units doing three, four, five million, so you're doing 20, 25 million throughout your whole company, then maybe you should be considering this. But if you're an average restaurant doing a million, million and a half, two million, or even less than that, this should not be on your radar in my opinion. The reality is that I know you're gonna make the argument of inventory. And if you haven't watched that video, let me just quickly explain it to you here. You can use a very simple formula to just take your weekly sales divided by your weekly purchases and get your weekly cost of goods sold throughout your whole menu. And that's going to be enough to tell you if you're even remotely in the ballpark of where you're supposed to be. Even better, use software like Bacon to incorporate rolling costs of goods sold and labor so you can get a prime cost. You can go to clickbacon.com to learn more about that. But also, once we know, are we even remotely where we're supposed to be, we can look at a PMIX and strategically make some decisions based on supply and demand, like I said, on whether we should be increasing prices or not, or whether we're hitting the mark for what our guests want. But we also have to be looking at factors like waste, theft, spoilage, over-purchasing, over purchasing, I'm sorry, over-portioning and purchasing and some of those things without massive, massive inventory systems are hard to figure out unless you just get into the kitchen and get your hands dirty. So I've got some systems and processes and procedures to make this a little bit easier. But again, I just wanted to come out and say, I know a lot of you have been taught this and I know that a lot of you want these perfect recipes and you want these perfect systems and you want these perfect tools and you wanna pay all this money for the software that you think is gonna make it easy for you but there's nothing that replaces getting your hands dirty and doing some good hard work and just going out there and making sure your food's great every day, making sure your line is set up properly, making sure your guests are trained properly, making sure that you're exceeding your guests' expectations on every visit. Because one of the brands that I work with is absolutely crushing it. And they, 
use my theories, my philosophies of kind of knowing. Are they good at it? Yes, they're very good at it. Are they great at it? No, but you know what they're great at? They're great at exceeding their guest expectations on every visit. And they're not going to make any more money by investing hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours and six months or six months or a year of their time to figure out that maybe they could be charging 10 cents more. The reality is their guests are loving their product. They raise their prices all the time and the guests keep coming and they keep coming. And the bigger they get, the less they pay for products, they're able to negotiate their prices down. And so what we're looking at are things like portion controls. We're looking at things that we can control without having to go down the rabbit hole of these perfect software tools with perfect recipe costing because we focus on operations. There will be a day when they want to get more focused on bottom line, but right now we're just focused on growing this baby, building the top line, making sure that every guest expectations are exceeded and we'll deal with the other stuff later when the company is big enough and they have the time and the resources and it's worth it for them. So instead of spending tens at thousands of dollars and hours and hours of your time trying to get these perfect recipes, grab a piece of paper right now and cost it out and just know are you in the ballpark. If you're trying to cost out a hamburger, how much do you pay per pound? How many ounces are in your burger? What do you pay for the bun? What do you pay for a slice of cheese? What do you pay for a bag of French fries and how many ounces of French fries are you putting on the plate? Add 10 or 20 cents for your lettuce and tomato and pickles, and you're done. That's it, it's that simple. And then you'll know are you even remotely where you need to be. So I've always been a top line operator. I'm a top line guy. I believe in treating the guests great, treating your staff great, exceeding expectations, giving the guests everything they need, having them come back over and over and over again and just absolutely loving your restaurant. While you need to know numbers, you only need to know a little bit until you're that big. I would highly encourage you if you've tried recipe costing, if you're wanting to do inventory, if you're stuck, please check out ClickBacon and please don't overcomplicate this. Restaurant financials and the restaurant business is complicated enough. We need some simple tools in our life to give us just the right amount of data that we need to know that we're operating within a range that's acceptable and then go build the top line. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and I look forward to those comments. I know you're gonna have comments here. I also think I forgot to mention, if I did forget to mention, there's another video that I wanna uh, put a link up there for. It's about how to cost out your recipes or how to, yeah, how to cost out your menu items using supply and demand. It's called a market minus pricing model instead of a cost plus pricing model. The link is up there, watch that video. If I didn't mention it earlier, we're gonna put it up there for you now. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I look forward to bringing you another one just like it. Remember, systems create freedom, freedom creates value, and value creates scale. Have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye. Are you struggling to grow your restaurant business? Are you failing to find the time to do all the things you need to do because you're stuck doing everybody else's jobs? This sucks. I know, I've been there. You're not alone. The difference between where you are now and where you want to be is a plan and some new tools. And that is why I created Scale. It's my newest course for restaurant owners who want to grow their businesses and build an extraordinary brand. Learn more at scalemyrestaurant.com. I hope you enjoyed this week's training video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, would you go ahead and smash the like button right up there so you can get notified every week when we release a new free training video. I've also gone ahead and put a couple of videos for you here and here that I think you're going to enjoy. Remember, systems create freedom. Freedom creates value and value creates scale. Manage systems, develop people, and be awesome.